I'm Dwight Bassett, and um, I am the carver of the championship tree. Uh, the tree was destroyed as a part of the 2009 NCAA celebration uh, when Carolina won, uh, and it was left about, they cut it off at about seven foot height, and uh, then I was asked to carve it. I think what inspired me was what the celebration was about. Um, I mean, it had to be vertical. There's strong limitations on what you could do because you had X diameter of a tree um, and you certainly couldn't you know, go outside of that parameter. So it had to be something that could come out of that vertical character. Um, and because the championship celebration was about basketball, um, it just seemed natural for an arm to be reaching out of that stump uh, holding a basketball mm -hmm. uh, as a part of that uh, championship tree. Well, we had to come up with a concept, um, and it was just a really, really rough sketch at the time. And I had to spend a lot of time in my mind thinking through the technicalities of how to get it out. Because, I mean, it's, it's actually no, you know, carving a tree is actually no different than creating um, a sculpture out of marble or anything else. I mean, the first task is to know where you're going, what you can't, how far is too far if you, you know, taking excess off. So you spend your first period of time removing as much of the excess because you can't begin to shape it until you've got all that excess out of your way. Um, and so the, you know, the first process was, you know, beginning to shape the top of the ball and then where the bottom of the ball would land and then keeping just a solid core, a thinner core, uh, underneath the ball all the way down to the trunk and then to begin to take that and then begin to refine it into an arm and, and hand you know, holding the ball. So for me, it was a matter of using power tools to get as much of the excess off. In other words, I used um, um, a Sawzall, electric Sawzall, had a portable generator, and that was the first tool I used to just simply cut chunks of material off of the tree so that we could begin to refine it into what it was going to become. And then once it moved to the next level, then I took uh, basically a handheld grinder with um, I don't remember the grit of sandpaper on it, but it basically just ate the wood. And the other difficult part with this carving is it's green wood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can't go too far and you've got to be careful because you're constantly either dulling your blade or ruining the sandpaper because of the moisture content in the wood. It's not like working with uh, traditional wood. So I probably went through a dozen um, sanding discs, you know, when I was beginning to refine down and create the shape. It has lasted far longer than I would have given it. Um, my best guess was a year. We're over two years now. Uh, I have to believe that there's apparently some level of respect for it or something. Um, I'm actually surprised that some student hasn't decided they need it in their dorm room um, because it is a, a unique piece um, and it does represent a specific time in, in history. Um, so I'm actually surprised at how long uh, it's lasted. And I put probably a dozen coats of sealer uh, after I had painted the ball uh, on it, but because of the moisture content in the wood, no sealer will ever actually seal that wood as long as it's able to upsurp the water through the base. You know, if it were to cut, be cut down, you could preserve it you know, in, a, in a dry environment and make it last, but as long as it's attached to the ground, uh, it's going to eventually start splitting completely away slowly.